God bless you. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I want to encourage you that if you need joy, if you need strength, the only source you can find that is through Jesus Christ. God bless you. This is Brother Henry Harris. Thank you for watching today. I pray that what will be said will inspire, uplift, edify you, and bless you um, in the upcoming days ahead and also in this present time in which we live in. Um, before we turn it over to our brother Michael Reeves, I would like to say a prayer for you. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing, Lord, which destroys every yoke. God, I thank you for this moment to have the opportunity to uh, meet with Brother Michael as he um, talks about his shop and how he got to open it and um, how he came to know the Lord. And God, I just praise you and I know that those who are watching are being blessed. And God, we just magnify your name in all of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's a pleasure to have Brother Mike with me today. I've known Brother Mike for about three or four years. I went to the Apostolic Faith Bible School, uh, trying to figure out where I'm going to get my hair cut, and I was recommending him, and I've been coming to him ever since. And um, if you live in the Joplin area or the Fort State area, you're looking for a good barber, I highly recommend you to come to Reeves Barber and Beauty Salon right here, uh, 7th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Uh, Michael Reeves is the owner of the shop, and at this time, uh, we're going to turn it over uh, to Brother Michael. Thank you, Brother Harry. Thank you. <laughs> so I'd like to um, ask, how did it how did it get started? I mean, when did you do your first like your first haircut or whatnot? Okay. Well, it started. Um, actually, um, I went to school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. So I went to school I went to uh, Tulsa Barber Beauty College, uh -huh. and that's where I first started um, cutting hair. And, uh, my uncle actually is the one who inspired me to cut hair. He, is that the guy that? Yeah, he's just being my other barber here. Oh, um, okay. He inspired me to cut hair. He, he started before I did, so he kind of inspired me to cut hair. And, um, <clears throat> from there, I just started cutting hair, pick up clippers, and just started practicing on little kids' hair. And um, eventually, I ended up just going to school and going to school for it, getting a license and everything. So, oh, that's good. When did your shop become open? Become open? Um, we actually opened here in Joplin. Um, Let's see, I've been open for about eight years now, going on, nine. and so I think it was about 2013, 2006, oh, that's no, it's 2004, that's when we opened up 2004, and I was open on the other end of the building, and uh, this, this is our second location here in Chicago, we've been here in this front section um, for about four and a half years so far. So, um, Prior to you opening this shop up, was there like any opposition, spiritual warfare you had to face, or did you have any trying times? If so, how did you deal with that? Uh, yeah, well, I'm first, sure you know you have a huge responsibility. All the hairs you have to do, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. When we first opened up, um, my first moved to Joplin, I was cutting hair at my house for a little while, and then um, <clears throat> saw our first location. I moved there, and um, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty tough. Faced a lot of different. Like trials and stuff you can face. Anytime you try to do something positive, mm -hmm. you always had an opposition. You always have the enemy trying to mm -hmm. set you back or cause you to get discouraged. So mm -hmm. basically, it's just a keeping focused, staying prayerful, and mm -hmm. keeping the Lord first of all. Mm -hmm. Keeping Him first and foremost in your life. Mm -hmm. He's the one that makes all things possible. So He's the one who helped me to make this possible. I had to dream of being my own boss for a long time. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you you dreamed about? Yeah, I've had this dream for a long time. Just to be a barber and, um, and uh, also do I used to do women's hair, but I don't, I don't really do it anymore. And, um, but your wife does do it. Yeah, my wife, she, she does the ladies' hair. And stuff, so oh. I just stick with the men and she does the women's hair. Oh, okay. So how many people do you have like per day or whenever your shop is open? Uh, that, I know that one day I was here, they were uh, coming in and out, in and out. We have quite a few people. I don't, I can't really recall the number, but I know we have people coming from, like you said, the four states. Um, I actually got a few people coming from way from Tucker, Oklahoma, and Miami, Oklahoma, and Pittsburgh, and um, just 
different parts of Kansas and you know the, the surrounding area here in Joplin, Carthage and the old show and stuff like that. So we got a pretty good volume of people coming oh, in and out. And, um, some days it's slow, some days it's get, it's get crazy, but you know, <coughs> thank God for all of it. It's, everything evens out. Mm -hmm. So thank God for it. Amen. And what I like <coughs> about this shop most dearly is that um, most shops you go to, you can't say that it's not a Christian atmosphere. And I would like to ask you, um, we talked about that over the phone, you mentioned so about a Christian atmosphere. What makes it a, Chris, a Christian atmosphere coming to this shop here? I definitely can feel it when I get here. I feel that peace around here. Nobody talking about sex or cursing and stuff like that. Not saying, you know, I know some people do that but Christian shop, but since I've been coming here, I've been very comfortable mm -hmm. coming here. So would you talk about the, the Christian atmosphere that we that you have here? Okay. Um basically we just try to keep a Christian atmosphere in this yeah. country. Because I mean I like to be in a place where I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. a lot of cursing and a lot of hearing a lot of different stuff that you really don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And um try to keep it try to have a place to work kids and and elderly people can feel comfortable and mm -hmm. don't have to be educated with the wrong type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, I have a lot of pastors from different churches that comes here and uh, a lot of different church members that comes here. So we just try to keep a Christian atmosphere to where men and women and children of all ages can feel feel welcome and mm -hmm. uh, don't have to worry about the the other type of stuff that yeah. I don't want to hear about. So basically we just, we do our work, do our job, and um, we do we we this on time to time, and uh, we don't push Jesus on nobody. We just try, basically just try to be a light. And, uh, that's what I do. I just try to be a light to, you know, I live my life um, according to the Bible. You know, I'm striving to to do the right thing. So I basically just um, at the time we play like DVDs and, and lifting up Jesus or. Sometimes a conversation gets stirred up and we, we have church in here. So <laughs> it's not just a place of um, get a haircut. It's basically uh, when the Lord put it on my heart to have a barber shop, the first thing he put on my heart was to have the shop to be more than just a shop, to have to be like an outreach in the community as far as uh, mm -hmm. you know, to witness to a lot of young people mm -hmm. that you know don't ever go to church or don't know nothing about church or don't know nothing about God. Or, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, we just use this opportunity to be able to lift up Jesus and at the uh, same time be affected in the community by you know, making people look nice. Ooh, that's great. You, you do an awesome job, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, how did you come to know the Lord? Um, that would be my last question. I was actually, um, I was raised in church. Um, but, you know, it's different when you, you're a little kid, you're raised in church. Some you take in, some things you don't take in. And as you get older, you kind of bump your head a little bit and, and uh, <clears throat> but what you was taught it, it's, it's always instilled in your heart you never get away from it so um, I basically just went through some different things and uh, I was searching I was miserable uh, as a teen growing up miserable searching for you know love and I didn't know it was love I was searching for and I didn't know it was the Lord Jesus Christ that I was missing and so uh, come to know the Lord just um, by going through different things in my life, uh, a lot of ups and downs, mishaps, and mm -hmm. a lot of um, just false promises, stuff like that, you look towards, and nothing never seemed to work out, especially when you're called by God, and I was being pulled in a different direction, mm -hmm. and uh, hit the rock bottom, fell on the face, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the yeah, the Lord always uses that type of thing to bring you back to God, so that was my way of getting back to God is just um, just basically hitting rock bottom, losing everything, and not having no joy, being miserable on the inside. And mm -hmm. even when I did have you know different stuff out there, and finances and everything was going smooth, I was still miserable. So mm -hmm. it was basically just the misery turned me to God, the misery and uh, the emptiness that I felt. That's what basically turned me to the Lord. Because you know? I wanted to be filled in the, you know the fear that you deal with in the world, fear of everything. And just, so basically it's the vision and fear and uh, the emptiness that I felt out there is what drove me to the Lord. I just thought about another question. I know what my previous question, I said that would be my last one, but I, I, I see that a lot of young people come here. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're an influence to me? Yeah. Um, In a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, you were to me. You still are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I try my best just to, like I said, be a light. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to... Um, Trying to strive, you know, to 
do what the Bible says to do. You know, I have my 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 mistakes, but for the most part, I try to strive to live like the Lord. And um, yeah, I've been able to influence. I've had different ones, several ones that tell me that you know they look up to me as far as the spiritual part mm -hmm. and just a, being a positive role model. And like I said, like that, I don't. I, I just try to put everything on Jesus, really. Um, mm -hmm. You know, basically, it's just. Um, let my life shine around. Um, but there are several people that come to me and, um, and they be having a bad day and then they come to the shop and something be said that it needed to be said to cause that person to think, to cause that person from making a mistake that it was intended on making. So we got a lot of people that was about to make some bad decisions that hmm, the Lord led them here to the shop. And, you know, at that time something was being said that that registered to them. And um, like the Bible said, no man come to the Lord as he draw him. And mm -hmm. I know that. The Lord uses this to draw people, mm -hmm. especially those that got the hands of God in life. And he uses this opportunity to be able to witness to that individual. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, like, and not just people that it's not saved, but not just, it's also Christians. You know, we iron shop and iron, so a lot of times we get together here in the shop and we just lift up Jesus and uh, different things of that nature. But yeah, I, I do believe I'm um, uh, influenced because I mean, just a lot of people out in the community, a lot of young people that, like I said, don't know the Lord, wasn't raised in church. Never you know, heard about Jesus. Address, you know, can yes, it's um, get a haircut. it's eight zero three South Maiden Lane. We're just uh, kind of cornered from the Sonics off of uh, Maiden Lane, Eighth and Maiden Lane, and right next door to the Days Mini Mart. Praise God. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I'm glad you took time out of your busy schedule to sit with me. And I pray that those that uh, watch uh, were inspired as I was, uh, as far as this young man. And let's keep Brother Mike in our prayers. Let's pray that um, we know he's successful, but let's pray that God will succeed, uh, that success that's on his life, and give him triple and what he has now. Now, Brother Mike, I'd like to actually set a closing prayer and go to a close. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, God, to not only talk about the shot, but, Lord, First and foremost, Lord, to lift up Jesus, Lord, to, to Lord God, to, you said if I can lift it up, you'll draw all men, Lord, and that's the purpose, Lord God. Lord, for you to draw all men, for you to save souls, Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity, Lord. I hope something that was said today, Lord, and encouraged, Lord God, someone, Lord, and we just thank you most of all, Lord, for being God of our lives, Lord, and keeping us in all your ways, Lord God, and protecting us out here in this big world, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God, we ask you to to continue to help Brother Henry, Lord, and all that he's doing, Lord God, but with him and his family, Lord God, keep him covered in the blood, Lord, and we just thank you, and we just ask you for you to continue to help us, Lord God, not only in, in our business, Lord God, but spiritually, Lord God, continue to open up avenues and doors for us to travel through, Lord God, and we may lift up Jesus, and we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, but Brother Henry, to stop by, Lord God, and we just ask you to cover him in his blood, in your blood, Lord, as he come and goes, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. You have a prosperous week.